In today's video, I'm going to walk you through the steps to get a Pi Note up and running. Let's take a look at the minimum requirements. We'll be installing Docker on the Windows 11 PC, so these minimum requirements are more related to Docker because the actual application for Pi Note doesn't require too much resources. You'll need a 64-bit version of Windows 11 Home or Pro Enterprise or Education version 21H or higher. WSL2 feature needs to be enabled on Windows. You need 4 gigs of RAM and the BIOS level of virtualization support must be enabled. If you're looking to install this on a Windows 10 PC, you can check out this video and I'll walk you through those steps. With all that out of the way, let's go ahead and install it. We're at our Windows 11 desktop and we're gonna open up our browser here. And the website that we're at right now is node.py.com. And this is where we're gonna download the Pi Node software. So we have the link right over here. Go ahead and click on that. And then we have two options available for us, one for Mac and one for Windows. We're gonna be doing the Windows version. So go ahead and click on that. And it's gonna download the file, which is 118 megs. And uh, it's done downloading. So we're gonna go ahead and install it by opening it. Minimize my browser. And it's a quick installation. We'll just get an icon over here on our desktop. And that's pretty much it to install it. It's going to launch it. And then we have the option to log in here. And we get this welcome screen and we're going to want to log in. And for this part, you're going to want to have the app already installed on your mobile device. So we have the Pi Note software installed. And for the next step, what we're going to need is our mobile device. So I'm just going to move this over here to the side. There we go. And there's my phone. And I'm gonna go ahead and click on the login button and it's gonna give me a code. And this is the code that we're gonna to wanna to enter in our device. So I'm gonna go over to the menu up here at the top, go to node, and we're gonna put in the signing code that we see over here. Okay, and once you have that entered in, you click on the confirm button and it's gonna sign in and that's been submitted. And you can see that we're logged in here on our desktop. I'm gonna go ahead and hide this window now. So this interface is going to be very similar to the one that you have on your mobile phone. If you don't have the app installed on your phone, I'll make sure I link that in the description below, as well as my referral code, because I believe you still need to be referred into the network. Uh, you can use that or any other one that you want. And uh, we're going to go over here and then click on the node button. Okay, so if there's a couple steps that you're going to want to do. And the first one is to install Docker now. I've already previously installed Docker, but I'm gonna walk you through those steps right now real quick because it is required in order for this to run. And then the next part is to open up some ports on our router so it can communicate back and forth on the network. So I'm gonna go ahead and minimize this and we'll install Docker. I'm gonna go ahead and open up my Google Chrome and I'm at docker.com, that's the official URL. I'll make sure I link this in the description below. And you can see automatically right over here, we have the download Docker desktop. I'm gonna go ahead and click on that. It's gonna download a file which is 594 megs. Uh, once that's complete, we'll jump over to the installation. Okay, the download is now complete. We're gonna go ahead and click on the executable file that we just grabbed. So we get a user control prompt. We're just gonna say yes to this. Okay, so we get a couple of options over here. We get the use WSL2 instead of Hyper-V, which is recommended. We're gonna leave that checked as well as uh, if you want a shortcut on your desktop, you can leave that checked and then go ahead and click on okay. And it's gonna to start to unpack and install files. This process might take a couple of minutes. I'll jump over to the next step. Okay, so the installation is now completed. What it's gonna to wanna to do is restart the computer. So we have the option right over here to close and restart and we'll go ahead and do that. Okay, so we're back at the desktop and we're just finishing up the installation right now. We get the uh, subscription service agreement here. Go ahead and click on accept. Uh, tutorial is about two minutes long. I'm gonna skip it right now when we bring it over here. Uh, to the main screen, the extension marketplace. And you can see that we have the bar down here. The engine's running, it's green. That means we're up and running and it's good. You can jump over to containers and run this command to run a sample just to make sure everything's running properly. We're just gonna minimize this right now and jump over to the next step. Okay, now that Docker is installed, we can go ahead and go back into our PyNode app and you can see that there is a green check. That means it was successfully installed. And if we go down a bit here, we have some ports that we need to open up. 31400 all the way to 31409. So these 10 ports need to be open. Not all the ports are going to be used. Some of these are dummy ports. I believe it's just the first three are the ones that are currently used right now. In order for you to test it, all you have to do is click on the check now button. These are probably fail, but we'll see what happens here. Okay, so this is sort of what I expected. These ports are not open on my router. Uh, and that's why they're, this test is failing. So what I'm gonna have to do is log into my router, open up the port forwarding option and allow this to be pointed 
to my computer. If you don't know how to do that, that is gonna vary depending on your computer and depending on your router. Each router might have a different setup. So I've created this video right over here to walk you through the steps of port forwarding. It can be a little bit lengthy process. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that and just be a few minutes here. This is a great tool that you can use when you're trying to find out if your ports are open and closed on your router and it's specific to the Pi network and it scans the ports that are going to be used. I'll make sure I link this in the description below. All you have to do is click on the scan button and what you'll see is the same ports that the app is going to try to scan for and it lets you know if they're open and closed. So right now I have them all closed. I'm going to log into my router and I'm just going to open up the ports. Okay and I've just opened up the ports on my router. I'm going to go ahead and start over and then scan again and you can see that everything is opened here. Now the ones that are actually going to be used is the first three ports. You might notice that there's only traffic going in the first three. The rest of them are for future use. Uh, you may not see any activity there. One other thing I wanted to note is as you're running this test and your Docker container here, so we're just going to stop this right now. So we're inside the Docker container. You can see that a couple of these uh, node port tests were added in here. If neither of them are running and you try to run the same scan, it's gonna fail. So you gotta go inside Docker, make sure that it's running. You can see all the ports are listed here. You wanna make sure that this container is running. You can see the status here that it's running. And if you go over here and you run the test again and you scan, uh, you can see that it's open. So not only does the port forwarding have to be enabled, you also have to keep your eye on the container and make sure that it's up and running as well uh, to complete this properly. So I'm just gonna go ahead and minimize all of these. So you can see over here, we're in the Pi Node software. It says, please wait. Uh, loading may take up to one minute. Uh, sometimes it takes longer than that, I've noticed. Sometimes it takes shorter. You might have to close it and restart it a couple of times. So what I'll do is I'll just shut it down completely, restart it. I know that all my ports are open, so I'm gonna go over here into the node. So you get this prompt over here that says your application has submitted, and that means you're up and running. Your Pi node is up and running. Uh, you'll get a toggle usually that has an on-off switch uh, that lets you know the status of your node, whether it's on or off, and you can control it there. And that's how you do it. That's how you set up a Pi node on a Windows 11 PC. I hope you found this video useful. If you did, please smash that like button. Share with your friends if they're trying to get it set up. Subscribe if you're looking for more. Thank you for watching, and I'll catch you on the next one.